This video proudly sponsored by Reliable After Market Parts, Inc. The link will be in the description below. We'll talk more about them later in the video. Right now, we need to get busy. Hi there, folks. Welcome to another episode of Michael in the Backyard. This is Michael in the shop today. I have an absolute mess. If you look around behind me here, there is literally garbage. There is literally treasures all around me. Uh, I have a mess and a half going on in here. I've got engines that have tilted and fallen off of engine stands that I need to put back on. I have tubs of stuff and projects laying out here on my benches, making them non-serviceable. Another bench full of stuff. Outboard engines everywhere. Coat hanging on my jack stand. This Is that an exercise bike? No, it's a jack stand. No, it's a, golly, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a floor jack. It has a coat hanging on it, so apparently it thinks it's a piece of exercise equipment at the moment. We got a four-wheeler that I was working on last summer that I'll get ready for the grandkids for next summer. I got, I got, don't even look back in this corner. This is terrible. Uh, this is embarrassing to a certain degree. That fell to the floor couple months ago I haven't picked it up I have aluminum scrap bucket that's full I've got well that's from the last project I did where I drilled a gabillion holes into three-quarter inch hot rolled it's a mess in here and and I'm sick of it okay it's all, I did this is all me and yes I usually pick up after myself like you know just finished up a job here yesterday I got this bench clean. I just started vacuuming the floor, but it's just gotten away from me. And it's like, I'm gonna be working right up next to the garage door with my back. I'll be like, I'll be right here going, okay, we'll work right here. Cause this is the only free spot I got. Let's make some space. Let's get this back in control. So we can get the next project in here. Next project being, I'm not sure yet. Okay, I do know. It's pulling the hydraulic cylinders off of the off of the big mo for the steering because they leak like a sieve takes me about a quart and a half for every hour and a half to two hours i run that thing not good fix the leak save myself let's call it five bucks an hour in hydraulic fluid it's not worth it plus it makes a mess and that uh needs to be fixed so let's see how fast i can clean this place up we've got look at this when you spray paint yellow Everything gets a nice little yellow highlight on it. Yep, yeah, that's a mess. All right, embarrassing as it may be, I'm telling on myself, uh, we gotta get, I gotta get it so I can walk around in here. It's not safe. All right, enjoy the time lapse. I might even voice over a little bit of this time lapse to kind of give you an idea of what's going on. I think that'd be kind of fun for you to know and why I'm doing what I'm doing. Whew. Okay, let's hang you up. All right, folks, I don't know if you enjoy time lapse as much as I do, but it is kind of neat to see something slowly transfer, form, not transfer, transform into something else. Now, what you'll see through this time lapse, you'll see projects that have moved on uh, since this whole thing, this whole process has taken right at uh, a month. Uh, by the time you see this video, it will actually be a full month. Uh, this video started on December 28th, as I said earlier, I believe. Maybe I'm saying it later, but you're going to hear it again, one way or the other. But how about you guys? Do you guys like to vacuum your shop? Me, I prefer vacuuming over sweeping. And you'll see me use my vacuum a lot. And that's because it picks up everything and it doesn't spread the dust around. And this DeWalt shop vac, I, I really like it. It's that Stealth Sonic. It's very quiet. I can actually watch TV while I'm vacuuming and not have the sound completely disrupted. Oh, oh, what's he doing now? Cherry picker time. So I have an engine that's over here on the left here under my bench that's been tipped over over there. I ain't kidding you. It's probably been there for three months. And I've had so much clutter and so much other things going on that it's just been sitting there. And now it is time to get that thing up. Now I'm always vacuuming. 
because when I roll my wheels around and my casters around, I don't like chunks of stuff being on the floor embedding in the tires and screwing up, I mean, you know, my smooth rolling performance. Now what's really cool is watch these cherry pickers in time-lapse because it looks like that thing just really goes up really fast and it, and it, and it really doesn't. So we gotta get this engine set back. This engine is actually a seized up engine. I've put a ton of stuff down the cylinders to try to break it free. And even in this video, you're gonna see me sit on one side of it and I'll be putting some more Marlboro Mystery Oil down the barrel of each cylinder through the spark plug hole. And I'm just gonna let it sit and soak. And maybe eventually one day, it ain't gonna get any worse. It might get better. It might actually break free. So the cool part about all these engines, I don't have to winterize them. They're in my shop, the shop's heated. I never let it get too much below 45 degrees. And uh, that way I can just pull them out. That's why I like them on these carts. I can pull them out and tinker on them anytime. Uh, this one may just end up being a parts motor for all I know. So we've got the spot where it's gonna go live again on its cart, not tipped off. The reason it got tipped off the cart anyway is because I was trying to break the thing loose and I thought I had it anchored on the backside with the motor mount and I did not. So, all right, cool. Well, at least we finally got that thing sitting out of my way for a while. Now let's go ahead and make us some more room. So I'm going underneath here cleaning things out and gonna rearrange things just a little bit. We're gonna roll up old Glory. We don't want her getting messed up and neither, neither do I the SEI banner. Now one thing I'm gonna have to do in the future, these racks, I love them, they're great. But as you can see, the one hangs in front of my door. My door will only open up to about a 30 degree angle and that's a pain I'm about to go in and out of. I'm gonna actually cut these down a little shorter and uh, we'll do that in a video. I'll show you how I'm gonna manage that, but not in this video. So here we are, got a couple more engines there. Just, just making things better. Trying to make it neat, trying to get some more floor space. I need to do some pro projects, you know. Uh, oh, there he is with the vacuum again. The dude just likes to vacuum everything, but it does make a big difference. I don't like walking on grit and dirt. I don't like rolling things on grit and dirt. Uh, after every job I do, I try to vacuum up the area I'm working in. All right, there it is. We got the stuck six cylinder. Oh, what's he doing now? Now, if you remember, I did the forklift, uh, forklift forks on my tractor. This was still the uh, chips from that. So we're getting that all straightened up. I have drill bits, as you can see on the middle of the bottom of the screen there that have been laying on the floor, I kid you not, four to five months. Those fell down off a bench and I've been working around them ever since because I knew it was gonna be a pain in the butt just to pick them up. But you know, this, if one of those days, this is just one of those days you pick your battle and you just take it on. Look at the shop now. We've got some space. We've got workbenches that are cleaned off and doing some final vacuum in here. And it just makes you feel so much better. Now my son has challenged me as to how how long will it stay this clean and time will tell. All right, what you see happen here? My wife's car needs an oil change. And don't think, oh, Michael's got a Lexus. No, it's an 06 Lexus and I only bought it two years ago. So I bought it very used, but I'm gonna show you here that the 3M product that I use to polish headlights. These headlights weren't that bad, but you'll see a night and day difference. So go, I'm going over here with just an 800 grit. It has a 500 grit pad, 800 grit pad and a 2000 grit pad and then some uh, clear coat that you wipe on so this one wasn't very bad as you can see so i just started off with the 800 grit pad and i use my drill only on 400 rpm because uh, you don't want to go too fast you don't want to burn it and you know chew up the plastic here's a good before picture of what it looks like see how it's got some haze in it and stuff now the reason it's you know this thing's a 06 it's old it's you know 18 years old and yet it still looks pretty good. And that's because this is the high-end Toyota stuff and they use some pretty good stuff. Now, if you got a Chrysler product, good luck. You'd be lucky if you could tell what color yellow that is and if there's even lights behind it, I'll tell you. But the, you know, the, whatever acrylic or plastic they use on this one just holds up much better. The only thing that holds up better than some of this stuff is just glass, you know? And here's this white, look at that. It's like white new. Let's see, this is a clear coat. It actually comes in a saturated little pad and it's just a clear coat that you wipe on and it certainly makes a heck of a difference. I really like it. The tape around there just keeps your buffing wheel or your polishing wheel from actually, you know, hitting your paint and screwing up your paint. But yeah, it doesn't take very long to do this. I mean, I probably spent 20 minutes to do both headlights, but now look at that. Just night and day difference in the appearance the car has when it has some good, clear plastic. When it's all yellowed and looks nasty, it just 
makes the whole car look cheap. Between that and a set of good wheels and tires, you know, the rest of it can be patinaed out. You've got that, it makes a heck of a difference. So let's get this one out of here. And let's got to work on the Jeep next. Now what I'm doing on the Jeep, there's a the back hatch opening the window. It wouldn't clamp. It's actually been spent the past two months with a two by four between the spare tire and the uh, window to keep it shut. And so I had to pull it out. I'm adjusting the latches. And it, it just, it's the second time I've had to do this for some reason. I don't know why it just, I lubed the crap out of the latch this time too. I made sure this thing was just well lubricated and uh, got it all fixed up. Here comes the boss. She's checking on me. She's like, what are you doing? I'm trying to fix things, honey. That's all. There you go. I did polish these. These were, these were that yellow I was talking about. You could hardly see that little uh, bulb protrusion in the middle there. They were so nasty looking. All righty, folks, we're here in the shop. Enough of the time lapse for a moment, anyway. Somebody made a comment about what's up with all the green and uh, red tees. Well, I'm not welding today, so uh, I can get away with wearing one of my, let's just call them polyester Hawaiian shirts. This material in welding splatter does not go well together. Neither does it with, when it comes to grinding as well either. So that's why every now and then you'll see me with my bib overalls and you might see my, uh, you know, just a t-shirt on, a cotton t-shirt to keep me from, uh, you know, catch it on fire as it were, or melting a shirt to my skin, which would not be good at all. Well, we got a lot done so far in this video. We got the shop, as you can see. It's looking respectable. It's getting... I got floor space. I got a chair to sit and watch TV if I get tired of just doing stuff. <laughs> Sometimes that my wife has come out here. The boss has busted me just sitting out here watching TV before. But she don't mind. But yeah, we got a little bit, you know, I've got... A couple of benches, you know, I've still got to get that bench dealt with. It's got a whole entire outboard motor on it that I'll be taking a, putting together, not taking apart. It's already in pieces. And then i still got to organize this a little bit here. It's kind of been a catch-all. And this bench I just put in front of it is kind of being a catch-all. Now, we have just went out and took a couple of cylinders off. I bought this kit. And it's a JIC cap and plug kit assortment. This just came in handy today. Because these have, let me set you here and show you what I got. So these here are, this will cover, you know, the male. We'll go into the female and this will cover the male end of a JIC fitting, which is nice. And this was a nice assortment from small up to, oh no, oh no, get back in there. The divider. It's kind of nice to have this divider in there and keep them all sorted that just what that went south on me in a hurry get in there stay there, ah. there we go. what the there anyway you can see that there's some good sizes here this seems to be a pretty nice kit definitely worth the money uh, got it off of Amazon, obviously. But yeah. The cell can. 64 pieces. Shows all the different numbers. So the cool part is, if you don't know which one you got, one of these screws into it, then you know what you got. Even though these don't have any numbers on them at all. But that's okay. Alright, let's show you what I got here. So part of this video, the main the main meat and potatoes of this video wasn't just cleaning the shop and, you know, changing oil and, you know, a couple of polished headlights. And then uh, this is the this is the main feature. These are my steer cylinders off of Big Mo. They leak so bad around here. You can just see them dripping and they just drip, 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 drip off both cylinders. Just a continuous drip. They'll actually take all my uh, power steering fluid, which is hydraulic fluid, and it will pump it all on the ground in about an hour and a half to two hours tops. And next time I get back in the tractor, I go to steer it and there's nothing there. This is the steer cylinder. So I, I found a variety of stuff going on wrong here. And I didn't waste you guys' time showing you how I pulled them off. I mean, they're just, 
they're just steer cylinders, okay? They're, they're uh, take this off, knock the taper loose, and they're out. Nothing special there. Didn't need to waste your time there. What I will tell you, though, is there was a, a, a let's just call it a, a multitude of errors going on on this thing. It had uh, a nylock nut on one of them which this one I could see would have that because it doesn't even have a space for a cotter pin. These all have cotter pins on the rest of them. So it makes me wonder if this one's ever has been replaced in the past. Does one of these things don't look like the other? Yep. But uh, they're all tight. I mean, they're all, they, there's no sloppy play in there. They all feel like they're in good shape. One of them just needs, you know, this one doesn't even have a grease, a way to grease it, which kind of bothers me a little bit. I like to be able to grease stuff. Does this one have one? Nope. That one actually is a little, I mean, it's not sloppy sloppy, but I might see what's available out there for these things. Because this one here doesn't have a cotter pin either, and the thread looks a little jacked up here. So we'll see what kind of rod ends are available for these things. That might be something standard. Maybe not. But uh, right now, what you see, I've got it over the solvent tank right now because there's a there's a whole bunch of grease. It's just, these are just nasty, dirty. This one's like filthy. You can see it's been leaking and gathering dirt for a while. But they were all still working. So the, the cylinder rods look like they're in pretty good shape yet. So I'm hoping I can just get a seal kit and rebuild these and put them back on the tractor. So we're going to, you're going to watch me clean for a minute here and we'll go from there. Well, folks, we got the cylinder all cleaned up and... Let's just say the results are disturbing. You know, these these here are stiff. You can't even you can't even move them around in there. They are just stuck. They these were never greasable. Down on this end, I don't know if you can see it, but you can look at down this rod here. You can see this thing goes whoop boop and it's bent. So this is bent out here. I actually rotated this, this around in the cylinder and it's actually bent in here as well. This end on this particular cylinder has, you know, it's supposed to be like this. It's supposed to have a little split in it and a clamp. And this has been welded on and looks like chipping hammer beat on. And it's a, it's a hot mess for sure. No grease circle on this end, same situation. Now this was floppy loose, wore out. So by the time you, I can't, rebuild this. I'd have to buy new rods here, new rod here, or straighten it. But I don't like, you know, the bad part about a rod, once it's been bent, you straighten it. You, it's not bad. I've done it before. and But there's so much that needs to be done here. By the time you rebuild these, I'm going to have a lot of time and effort in it, and I'm still going to have something that I'm not still quite happy with. I pulled the, in, the, the cover off of this piece here. The wire was sticking out the side. The wire is supposed to go in here and trap this in. That's sticking out the side for some reason. Don't know why. Pretty sure when I, when I ran this thing in and out, I could feel tight spots and loose spots. That could be from the bend. Uh, don't know once I pull it apart if there'd be a lot of excessive wear in the cylinder from it being bent because that puts extra stress on things. Could be one of the reasons why it's leaking. But they both eek leak equally well <laughs> if that's uh if, if that could be a way you look at it but it looks like i can still buy these cylinders online this exact cylinder which i'm not unhappy with this cylinder um this has been on there a long time these have been in use a long time but who knows when and where and how something got bent you know this thing's got a lot of years on it and a lot of hours and who knows when it finally gave way. So I'm just going to have to break down. I hate to do it. I've got a shopping cart full of the parts I need. Uh, the only thing I can really reuse here are my hoses and these fittings here. 
Those are all, should be very reusable. It looks like I might have to buy some O-rings maybe for these two here and these two here. But yeah, it's uh, it's too bad. I was hoping to, I was hoping this video was going to be about rebuilding these, but uh, this is not a good candidate for rebuild, unfortunately. This looks like a better candidate for replacement. Plus, all these boots, you know, three of the four of them were actually there, and they were pretty rough. When you get the whole new rod ends, they come with new cylinders, and these threads on some of them were a little bit beat up. Weren't in great shape on the ends here. The threads were terrible. So it just makes sense to replace. So we'll be back on this when we have the cylinders replace them. We'll, we'll transfer some stuff over. We'll put them back on and hopefully my leaks will be cured and I'll have power steering back. But uh, it is a hefty price to pay on that. But I want to do it right. I don't want to do it halfway and then you know, halfway through a project, I'm, I'm going back and visiting this. A lot of times when I want to fix something, my goal is not to go back and visit this, visit this again. You know, this should be done for a long, long time unless I do something stupid and mess it up. So we'll be back when it's time to put the new cylinders on, I guess, unfortunately. But yeah, that's, that's the case. All right, we're back out here. A few parts have shown up. As you can see here, we've got a new hydraulic cylinder. We've got a rod in that fits, and I've got this one assembled so far. We've got the two fittings that go in the end here. This is on the right hand side of the tractor, so these will be this will be pointing down, and these will be pointing to the left toward the center of the tractor. And I've locked it all down as is. It's ready to go on. I actually double checked to make sure this taper was good. The only thing I didn't care for on these, and I'm guessing they're already pre greased and they're sealed up pretty nice. Um, they're not greasable, but there's a lot of things you buy today that aren't greasable. I've got these off a of warehouse place. Um, I'll leave the name down below here. Uh, pretty nice company. He sent me an email thanking me for my order personally, which I thought was pretty nice. And you go online and look at how many things this company has online for sale. It's an incredible amount of stuff. So I reached out to him to see if he'd want to do anything in the future for a sponsor. We'll see if he gets back to me. Because there's trailer parts, there's tractor parts, there's ag parts. I mean, he's got a lot of stuff on there. So we're going to go ahead and I've got to get, let me get you down here. This is the other old cylinder here. I need to take these hoses off, take these off, put them on the new one, and then get this thing re, redone. Now, my understanding here, looking at this... The way this was laid out, just to kind of give you an idea, get you down here, is this one will have a tie rod end on it that screws in here uh, that looks like this. This is the old one. That'll screw in here and lock down. And then these hoses naturally want to go like this. And I'm pretty sure that when you're putting into this side, Whichever side's in and out, I'm not sure here. But when this side goes in and pushes this, is, this one out, this other one is going the other direction. <laughs> so this is your inlets for both. So then if you're putting pressure into here, it's going here, pushing that out. And then the other one is letting pressure come back this way. You know, it's kind of crisscrossed applesauce there, I guess, huh? Because you can't have them both pushing like this port here. Maybe they're already opposites. Yeah, they're already opposites when you flip them around from this side it goes over to here. You know, if these were if these were flip flop back and forth. Anyway, I might have said to take a little closer, pay a little closer attention when I took them apart. But let's go ahead and get this one set up, and we'll go from there. And it might already might already be crisscrossed, just from the simple fact that if you had this cylinder here over here. Now, if this one went to this one, that would be the same. It would need to go to this one. I'll figure it out. I hope. <laughs> All right. I should. I don't. I think I took a picture, but I don't remember. I'll have to go back and look at my photos if I took a picture of this because I do know that the steel line hooks up to the top, and the other non-steel line hooks up to the bottom. 
that's the way it was. And one other quick thing noted here. I noticed this has got the, this hose looks a lot newer. Way newer than this one. This one's got some chafing going on here. So good chance I'm going to have to get one of these lines made up at my local Napa store. My local Napa store can make these lines, which is awesome. And for a reasonable price. All right, let's get down here and get busy doing the other part of it. And then uh, I want to get some paint on these things. All right, before we can uh, put some paint on them, let's finish getting these things assembled. I uh, took particular care in trying to make sure I got never sees on everything I want to ever take apart again. That's first and foremost in my book. Once we got those things locked down and in place where I thought they should be, went ahead and got the old uh, fittings put on there with the new O-rings and took particular care not to squish the O-rings or smash them or cut them so they don't leak. So hopefully we have success when we put it back together. Now we're gonna mask off all the areas I don't want paint on. And uh, we're just some blue painter's tape. As you can see, the old train was in the way, so I backed it out and uh, we put us on some primer. We let that dry and then we proceeded to paint them yellow. Turned out pretty good, I think. Look at that guy on the TV in the background. I don't know if he knows what he's talking about, but. All right, we're back to waiting on parts again. Check it out. The new old cylinders. New cylinders. Ooh. Some of you might be asking, why don't you paint cars for a living? Because I can't paint. <laughs> Let's just say they look pretty good on camera. Got a nice reflection going on and all that fun stuff. So I've still got to get a new hose. This hose actually has some damage to it. Um, probably would last another 10 years, but it's cracking. Let's see if I can get the bend here. But yeah, there's a lot of cracks along this side. Now this hose is relatively new. This one is uh, 4,000 PSI. So that's a 3 8 hose. So I just got to take this one in to my guy and I won't throw this one away, but I'm going to get a new one made uh, because this could make a good backup. This could be a spare for either one of these uh, situations here. So I'll hang on to that old hose. Now, old hoses that are terrible, degraded or whatnot, get rid of them. But because I've got spare hoses for the other ones I replaced. Uh, but yeah, I, I'll pull the tape off of here. It'll look all nice and pretty and fresh underneath there. I protected the rubber. Didn't want to paint the rubber and all that fun stuff. But I, yeah, I got to get the ends that screw into here. That look like this joker right here. And this will be ready to rock and roll. I got a couple of clamps. They're ready to go. Um, happy, happy, happy. Alrighty, and I actually even have a spare clamp over here on this one I could take off if I wanted to. So these things are going to a, let's just call it a spare tub box. If for whatever reason I was to absolutely destroy one of these, bend it beyond use, I could throw one of these on temporarily, but I don't want to because they leak so horribly bad. But, you know, sometimes in an emergency situation, that bolting that one back on could get me back around and parked in a good location. You know, it could be one of those things. That's why I would hang on to it. So we'll see you when we get the uh, other parts in. Then hopefully I can get Big Mo back together so we can do some work with it finally. I'm really worried, though. We got some snow coming in, but because I know Big Mo doesn't do good on the snow, especially without chains. And maybe I'll have to invest in some chains. We'll see. All righty. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> All right, folks. We're literally... Literally, 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 about one month later. I started this project on working on these cylinders and taking them off and figuring out what I was going to try to do with them on the 28th of December. It is now almost the 28th of January. It's the 27th. But through the help of reliable aftermarket parts, Inc.com or Reliable. You'll see the link. I'll put it on the screen down here. Uh, they were able to hook me up with all the stuff I needed. 
for my 550 John Deere backhoe, which was awesome. And the parts look exactly like the parts I pulled off, which is amazing to find parts still available for something that's over 50 years old. Nope. Yep. Nope. 49 years old. Put a little masking on there. We took our rubber off so we wouldn't put a whole bunch of paint all over our rubber pieces. Look at them slid back on here. They fit really nice. These guys are ready to go back on the tractor. I'm excited to get it back together, but I'm not excited about the conditions. We've had some interesting weather, to say the least. And uh, now it's... <coughs> squeak, squeak. It's really nasty out right now. You know, we just got through having record snowfalls about a week ago. We got over two feet of snow uh, in most areas around where we're, around where I'm at. And the ground never really froze hard <laughs> is the interesting part. And then we got all the snow. So all the, the ground never froze. And a blanket of snow this deep, even though we had sub-zero weather for about a week and a half to almost two weeks of it dropping down well below zero, highs of being one, two degrees. Now, most of the country north of us go, big deal. No, it's a big deal. It is. Because it's not what I want. It's not what I'm used to. <laughs> but Mother Nature always delivers a couple of sucker punches here and there, don't they? Doesn't she? So now that I've snow blowed and plowed and kept tracks cleared so I could walk in the two foot snow, it decides to warm up this past week and melt a whole bunch of stuff. Well, half the snow is melted away. But where I plowed, it's a hunt or snow blowed, it's 100% gone and it is mud soup. I honestly was thinking about waiting to do this tomorrow morning when it was 27 degrees, at least the ground would firm up. But I really want to get this done so I can get you guys' video out for you on Sunday morning. Well, as you can see, we got these beautiful cylinders all painted up. I've got my protective caps over the areas that, are, you know, the caps I bought, these JIC, JIC caps. I've got everything adjusted and set up as it was from the old ones. And will I do a tire alignment? I might check it eventually, but this is 100% hydraulic steering. Both cylinders do. So uh, let's trudge our way, dr trudge, drudge. Let's slop our way out to the lean to, take a handful of tools with us. I got to make a couple trips to get all this out there. Uh, if I had a mud sled, that would be great. I would normally in this situation use my one Jeep and just use it for a tool, a tool, uh, cart and get it all thrown in there and go over there. But it will, I'd be surprised if it could get around well with the, let's call it foot of snow that's left in the slicky, greasy stuff that's underneath. I don't even want to describe it. It's just nasty. I guess the big win is it doesn't smell. Well, not all of it. I got five dogs. Some of it might have a different odor. See you at the tractor. What's going back in here is, you know, one end has castellated nut, the other end has does not. One's got a nylock nut. So one will need a cotter pin and the other one does not. And these go back in here like so. One. All right. Ah, Mother Nature or not Mother Nature. Murphy's Law wouldn't let me get that one started on there. Hey, Mercury, how you doing, buddy? Oh, Mercury's having fun running around out the snow as it's melting. Trying hard not to hit my head on anything under here because 
my experience is with this tractor, my head doesn't move anything when I hit stuff. Let's see if we can get this drawn back down in here. Get that taper to lock. The cleanest paint on the tractor at the moment. The reason this took a while for me to get around to getting her finished, and I shouldn't say get around, I literally just got the right parts in uh, two days ago. And when I got them in, I promptly painted the pieces I hadn't painted yet and had a couple days of dry, and now it's the weekend and we're getting after it. I tried to order a couple of pieces. You know, when you're starting to do some internet searches for parts for an old tractor like this, you get things that look like they are the right pieces, but they're not the right pieces and whatnot. But then reliable aftermarket parts, ink hooked me up with the parts. Now, I'm going to probably have to put some washers on this, it looks like. Because these nice thing is these tapers were really good shape. The tapers were not wobbled out. They were locked. I had to actually knock them loose pretty hard, which I was very happy to hear that because the last thing I wanted to do was cut these off and put me some new tapered pieces in and fabricate that stuff. But as you can see now, the cotter pin is well, well below the hole on the castellated nut. Or the hole is well below the castellated nut piece. So I'm going to go get some washers when I go grab the other cylinder and we'll get that doctored right up. I know you guys probably can't see because my head's in the way over here, but I want to see if I can get this one to tighten up. Once I get both of these mounted up in here, it'll be awesome because we be hooking the lines back up, the lines between the two of them, and I can actually fire this thing up. Hooray. And <laughs> see if I got any leaks. I'm a little concerned about the O-rings I put in here. I mean, I went to my Napa store and tried to match up what we had in here. Uh, the other cylinders seem to have a little bit deeper chamfer in there to help absorb the O-ring. So we'll just have to see if it leaks or not and go from there. I'm having trouble getting this on the seat, so let's put a little downward pressure on it and give it a little... See if I can get a lock in a little bit here. Oh yeah, that's working. Uh. Oh, let's pop loose again. Dang it. It's gonna fight me, ain't it? There, we got that pretty darn tight. Now, I'll go to the other side and do it. I wanna fix this. I got some washers in my pocket. Most likely what I'll do here is before I put the old uh, cotter pin in, give this thing a little bit of a back and forth, put a little stress on it, and then see if it'll suck down any more to make sure she should be seated. We're talking taper here, baby. Major taper. Let's see if that washer's enough. I don't think it is. I've got one that fits up in there, which is nice. And then I got this one that's stainless. Well, that looks like that might just work. That shouldn't back off. Let's do the other side. I'm in such an awkward position. I can't see if I got the camera good enough. If it's not good enough, I'll just... I'll cheat my head on everything. I'll just cut it out. Okay, we got that one. Let's see here. It's nicer to put it on this end and then I can extend it out. Bingo. Well, this one's doing the same thing to me as far as I'm gonna need to, I actually wanna have to get that other one back apart and get a measurement on that washer. And cause I'll actually need like two of those would be actually perfect and only have one so okay that's tight let's see if we can get this other side done then we'll be hooking up some hoses i'm gonna be so excited to not have this thing leaking that'll be so sweet 
I'm sorry if my head's in the way, but I got to see, guys. I won't bore you with watching me wrench with my head in the way. I know the lighting under here is probably just awful, folks, but that's all I got right now. Well, we got it tightened up down there. I want to take and sneak a little bit of hydraulic fluid back into the back into the uh, reservoir. Ugh. Which is easier to do when the cylinders are up, but I don't have a way to lock the cylinders in the up position so it don't come down and crush me and kill me. So we'll just sneak it in this way. We'll see if we can top her off, work the cylinder, see if anything's leaking, and then top it off again. The cool part will be I won't have to fill this up every time I use it. There, we're full. Or what they're called, full to overflowing. I know I'll have to add more. As soon as it uh, fires up and circulates and get on, we got to bleed all the air out of the cylinders. Now the question is, will it start? I've only had the old uh, heater plugged in for about 40 minutes, which I'm assuming it needs a lot more than that. Let's just put you out here and get the old smokestack. Smokestacking. Oh. Now this thing does have a cold start feature, which basically you hold it over to the left on the key switch. Supposedly it has some something in there, some magic. They claim you hold it there for about 20 seconds or 30 seconds, I don't remember which. And then you start kicking her over. It's wanting to go. Helps if I give it a little more gas or a throttle. There we go. That didn't start too bad for 36 degrees. snow from the roof. <laughs> there, she's starting to move. Hey, hey. Means I did something right. Can I add some more? I haven't even had a chance to use the old fork yet. As you can see, I got grease on everything that ain't painted and it didn't rust. What a mess. This big old pile here is what's been falling off my roof. <laughs> Don't want to be caught underneath that. Let's go underneath and see if we can see any leaks. 
This cylinder looks clean and dry. Nice. No runs, no drips, no errors. Sweet! <laughs> Gotta like that. Thank you, reliable aftermarket parts. My tractor is now dry. I love it. I'm gonna work it back and forth a couple more times here. treatment to keep this thing from gelling up. Well, I can't tell you how happy I am to see brand new cylinders in there and no leaks. I'm going to go around to the house and get my gel treatment. We'll be right back. Folks, I can't think of a better outro than hearing this bad boy running in the middle of the winter, having a power steering repaired with the parts from ReliableAftermarketParts.com. Don't forget, don't forget to check out the link below in the description. Don't forget to to give the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. We've got a lot of things we're going to be doing with this thing this coming summer, and. Uh, promise you it's going to be fun i didn't put these forks on here for no reason at all i got big plans for them forks so she should be good <laughs> i love hearing it run it just warms my heart to hear an engine run any kind of engine run and this being my first diesel i've ever owned you guys can probably tell by the smile on my face i'm still pretty stoked about it and i've had it for a little while now we've only put about 20 hours on it before I the steering thing was causing me a lot of trouble let's just say it cost me about five dollars an hour in hydraulic fluid because it leaked that bad and now all I gotta do is pull the cap and look at it and go yeah it's still full and just work for many many hours and not even worry about that piece of the equation oh my goodness this is ah can't wait to get it out this summer right now the ground it's thawed out quite a bit and you can see this was about two feet deep here just about a week ago. There's bare yard showing now, but this ground is so soft. 
Honestly, if I drug that out, drove that out here under this thing, I'd leave ruts that a chihuahua will get trapped in for sure. Good thing I don't have any chihuahuas. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna let this run a little, bit, a little while longer to get some of that diesel fuel anti-gelling treatment through the system. And then we'll shut it off. The happy thing about it too, I have to look up and see what kind of battery this has in it. This battery has just been subjected to being down for a month, not running, sub-zero weather for about two weeks straight and it didn't even hesitate to about think about turning over and running. I mean, it was just incredible. Now, obviously I have a block heater, that helps a lot. Plug that sucker in about an hour or two before you're gonna use it. It warms things up enough that it fires, but my goodness. Oh man, I'm so happy. I hope I'm that good when I'm I don't know what, you know, dog years at seven years, one human year, heavy equipment. What's that year per human year? Let's just say by the time I'm that old, no, nope, that wouldn't be. By the time I've been used that much, I hope I'm still in that good a shape, I guess. But you know me, maintenance, maintenance, maintenance. All right. Well, I'm gonna get shut this off. I'm gonna go meet some friends for supper and uh then i gotta get busy editing this thing so you guys can see it in about 12 hours this is michael saying if it ain't broke fix it till it is we'll see you on the next video if i'm lucky i'll see you on the next video and i hope you feel lucky you get to see me but uh, otherwise be kind to one another treat each other fairly treat others as you would like to be treated and uh do something nice for somebody this week. This is Michael. I'm out.